Life at these elevations is existing on the fringe. It's hard to believe that life could even persist here, let alone thrive. Join me on today's expedition as we find out just how they do it, here on the rooftop of America, the Colorado Rockies. There's very few creatures up here in the Alpine that are more adapted to living with intense cold and living with incredible cover of snow than the pika. You'd hardly believe that this was actually a relative of a rabbit. And rabbits use their ears as one of the ways that they cool off. And the larger the ear of the rabbit, the hotter the habitat. So when we look at desert dwelling rabbits, you notice their ears are incredibly huge. And those that are found in cooler climates are smaller. The pika's ears are tiny. And the tiny ears and stocky build mean that this creature will not shed heat easily. And it actually can overheat at a mere 73 degrees. Many researchers consider the pika to be a sentinel of climate change. Colin is right up next to a pair of Aplomato falcons. And we've been watching these falcons for several minutes now, just sitting there. And this is a bird that is only here in the United States, right along the Mexican border. And in fact, it may have even disappeared from here before massive conservation efforts brought it back. Wow, I'm really shocked at what I'm looking at. <laughs> yeah, not exactly what you expect to see on an island <laughs> off the coast of California. Bison, it's not a native California mammal, but it's hard enough for a squirrel or a fox to get to this island. Imagine a bison. I mean, How did they get here, right? They had to have a little help, and you probably already know. I, I happen to have studied and, and found out, you know, the real story about how the bison got here, but... Yeah. What in the world would a huge animal like that, what kind of impact could they have on right. this island? I usually think of tarantulas as being a species that we find low in the desert, but we're up around 6,000 feet elevation in a really nice woodland. Huge fangs up on the front of this spider, but I'm not so worried about it because this spider doesn't have very potent venom. It's large, it has a lot of it, but they're very reluctant to bite. The black-bellied whistling ducks are sometimes also called black-bellied tree ducks. If you look right behind me there, up in the trees, you'll see ducks flying into and out of the trees. We don't think about ducks using perches. You could not mistake that duck for any other species, making use of a habitat that you just wouldn't expect. 